Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today we'll look at an introductory look at the Tico SG2 Programmable Logic Relay. Our objective is to take an introductory look at a representative example of an inexpensive, basic, fixed PLC programmable logic controller. In this case, a third generation Tico SG2 10HRA Programmable Logic Relay, or PLR. We'll familiarize ourselves with the device and learn how to program it using the ridiculously small LCD screen and dedicated buttons. Later lectures, we'll make use of the much easier to use Tico SG2 client programming software to program the device. This lecture is not intended to be a thorough review nor an endorsement of the Tico SG2 PLR, but rather serves to familiarize the viewer with just one of the many inexpensive basic programmable logic controller options commercially available and may help the viewer to download the datasheet and or catalog entry for the Tico SG2 PLR family. Go fetch and play along. PLR stands for Programmable Logic Relay, which hints that this device is intended to be the little brother of a full-blown Programmable Logic Controller, or PLC. Little brothers have a reputation of being embarrassing, annoying copycats forever pestering their older siblings. Not this little brother, though. This is one of those awesome little brothers that bails you out of jail and tells mom he picked you up at the library. The Tico SG2 PLR is astoundingly powerful given its small size and incredibly inexpensive and very easy to use. Additionally, a full function version of the Tico SG2 client programming software used to program this device is available free of charge. This being said, it's a device suited for small applications only with a limited number of input and output points. Additionally, the free software isn't particularly feature rich, but as they say, you get what you pay for. Interpreting the part numbers, the Tico SG2 PLR product line is very easy. Four fields immediately identify important basic characteristics. The fields are as follows. Number of input and output points, form factor, output type, and input power. Note not all combinations of fields are available. Using the legend, we can see that our representative example, the Tico SG2 10HRA, has 10 input and output points, six of which are inputs and four of which are outputs. It includes a display and a keypad. It uses electromechanical relay outputs and operates on AC voltage inside the range of 100 to 240 volts. This operational range includes 120 volt AC US standard pilot voltage, making it a perfect fit for our application. Diving into the specifics about this particular model, the inputs are designated I1 to I6 and are located on the top of the device. Note that these inputs are digital in nature. Recall that a digital signal is one that is characterized by a clear and definite transition between two mutually exclusive binary states that is never a little bit of both or halfway in between. Customarily, PLCs designate these mutually exclusive states as a logical zero, low or false, to the absence of voltage, and the opposite as a logical one, high or true, being the presence of full voltage. Given we intend to operate this device on 120 volt AC, zero volts is recognized as a logical zero, and 120 volts AC is recognized as a logical one. To account for noise, the Tico SG2 10HRA PLR allows a range of acceptable logical zeros and logical ones. Any digital input receiving zero up to 40 volts AC is assigned a logical zero or false. Any digital input receiving above 79 volts AC to the full 120 volts AC is assigned a logical one or true. Digital inputs receiving continuously variant analog signals or signals between 40 and 79 volts are invalid. Digital inputs I1 to I6 could be used for switched input devices like push buttons, limit switches, or pressure switches. Electromechanical relay outputs are designated Q1 to Q4 and are located on the bottom of the device. Power connections appear in the upper left. This device is intended to function on 100 to 240 volts AC. In the lower right, this device is a communication port that enables connection to a PC using a USB cable. The communication port allows a technician to program and monitor the device using the Tico SG2 client programming software. There are four cursor buttons that allow navigation and four operation buttons. OK, Escape, Delete, and Select. 
will be making use of these dedicated buttons to write a basic program on the ridiculously small screen. Note if the device is set to start in run mode and contains a valid program, upon power up, the device will immediately execute that program. This can be hazardous in an industrial environment, so familiarize yourself with proper shutdown and startup procedures on whatever system you're working on. Let's assume this is our sample system. Note the schematic indicates there's a normally open maintain contact selector switch on input 1, normally close momentary contact red push button on input 2, normally open momentary contact green push button on input 3, and a normally open momentary contact yellow push button on input 4. Inputs 5 and 6 have no field input devices attached. Electromechanical relay outputs Q1 through 4 selectively energize or de-energize pilot lamps with 120 volt AC. Upon powering up the device, we see it immediately goes into run mode. The top I or input entry of the home screen indicates which of the inputs are energized. It looks like input 2 is energized as we'd expect given the normally closed electromechanical nature of the field input device hooked to input 2. Across the bottom, Q output entry of the home screen indicates which of the outputs are activated. It looks like no outputs are energized. The escape button takes us to the main menu. We've got a couple choices. Ladder, function block, parameter, and stop. A blinking cursor appears next to the active line. Navigating using the down arrow, we see additional choices. Data register, write, real-time clock set, password, language. Note one can view an existing program on a running device. However, one can only reprogram a stopped device. We can navigate to stop using the arrow keys and press OK. Another screen asks us to confirm our selection. Press OK to stop the device. Let's clear the existing program and start fresh. Navigate to clear program and press OK. Another screen asks us to confirm our selection. Navigate to yes and press OK to clear the program. We'll return to the top menu. We can now navigate to the ladder entry using the arrow keys and press OK. We're offered a blank screen. This is where we'll write our program. Before we do that, let's discuss the programming format offered by the Tico SG2-10HRA PLR. The small display allows a ladder logic diagram with four columns, three of which are input or contact fields on the left, and the fourth is an output or coil field on the right. A rung in a ladder logic diagram is intended to have three contacts wired to a coil. However, if you want to use less than three, this option is available. We'll discuss rungs with more than three contacts in later lectures. The Tico SG2 PLR can run a program with up to 300 rungs in the ladder logic diagram. Available input or contact types include, but are not limited to, terminal inputs, cursor buttons, retentive auxiliary relays, non-retentive auxiliary relays, counters, timers, and software-generated output contacts. Terminal inputs are the field inputs, I1 to I6, and the cursor inputs on the front of the device. These are the real inputs that really interact with the real physical world. In contrast, the remaining contacts are software-generated virtual elements. Some of the available contacts have coil functions and customizable parameters. We'll discuss what this means when we examine these features in later lectures. For now, here's a brief overview. An auxiliary relay, if you want to think of it this way, is the programmed equivalent of a virtual relay and its associated contacts. There are 31 retentive auxiliary relays, meaning the state of the auxiliary relay and its associated instructions are maintained at power off, and 31 non-retentive auxiliary relays, meaning the state of the auxiliary relay and its associated instructions are not maintained at power off. Counters and timers obviously perform counting and timing functions and can be used to coordinate the activity of a system. Software-generated output contacts are kind of like the programmed equivalent of an auxiliary contact. When an output coil changes state, these contacts also change states. Available output or coil types include, but are not limited to, contactors and set or reset coils. For this particular lecture, we're only going to use the terminal inputs and a traditional contact or coil. A traditional contact or coil is equivalent to the output enable or OTE instruction. We'll discuss some of the other coil options in later lectures. Just look at all the cool toys you have crammed in this tiny reprogrammable device. If these were real physical elements rather than virtual programmed ones, 
Imagine the size, weight, and cost this would entail. This flexibility is one of the principal advantages of programmable logic controllers. Add to this advantage the fact that the device can be reprogrammed and updated without tediously rewiring all the hardware components. Let's program the toInput AND function by placing two make functions in series with one another. Let's use inputs 2 and 3, and we'll use this program to light a pilot lamp on output Q1. Here's a general guideline to using the dedicated buttons on the front of the device to enter a program. Rule 1. Never use the dedicated buttons in the front of a device to enter a program. They're ridiculously hard to use because of all the annoying proprietary shortcuts that change from manufacturer to manufacturer. It took me no small amount of patience to figure out how to toggle between the different coil options in the Tico SG2 PLR family because I was using the shortcut commonly used for a different manufacturer. As soon as I figured it out, I forgot it. Additionally, the LCD screen is super small and hard to read in certain lighting conditions. Add to these annoyances, these devices are very easy to throw forcefully against a wall in a moment of extreme frustration. Rule 1. Never use the buttons on the front. Always wrote a program on a PC using the manufacturer-specific programming software and then transfer it to the device using the programming cable. If you've got this option available, use it. You'll be glad you did. This being said, our program is pretty simple and you'll appreciate the ease and utility of the programming software that much more after being exposed to this unnecessarily complicated procedure.